All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to start something new here. Uh, I know this video is late, but I thought about it last week, and I said, I just got to get this video out here because I think it's just a good idea. Uh, I'm going to go through our opponent for the next week through the eyes of EA Sports and Madden because, you know, Madden has put all these measurables out and have, have just recorded just about everything about each and every player. So we can look at these numbers and kind of get a gauge of what we could expect to see out there on a the football field on Sunday. So I'm interested. I've went through this thing uh, one time because I've made this video before, but it crashed out and it makes me mad sometimes. <laughs> but uh, I went through this video a couple of times and I saw some real interesting things that I want to make sure I point out to you. Number one, Jake Locker. Now, first, I want to touch on our quarterback. I think he will be fine. I think he will come out um, this week and he will throw no more than one interception. He will be very efficient. He will be very uh, dialed in, and he will make sure he does not make any mistakes, you know, <laughs> or, or and lose the ball game. Now, I think he'll do fine, but I think Jake Locker will either match his play or be better than him. Reason being, Jake has Ken Wisenut, who's very good at, at, at coaching up quarterbacks. And he's got this guy playing at a, at a pretty good level right now. And then you put the smarts that they're putting in his head, you couple that with these kind of measurables. Look at his speed, 83 speed, 85 agility, 86 acceleration. That's moving for a quarterback. He's like one of these new, the new breeds of Andrew Luck type guys that, can, that have cannon arms and can move and are big, 6'3", 223. So we have the physical things to deal with, along with the ability to throw the ball out the gym. I mean, he has uh, 95 throw power. The only problem is the short accuracy, medium accuracy, and, and deep accuracy, which is a lot of decision-making and things of that sort. He can't get the ball in the right spots. And his deep, man, his deep ac accuracy is 64. If he beats us on some deep sh shots and he has 64 deep accuracy below 65, then I'm gonna be, I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna lose it. Running backs, I don't want to spend too much time here. Sean Green, McCluster, San Sankey, Washington. No one really sucks. No one really is great here. Uh, all four are capable backs. I've watched a little of Sankey, but what I've seen of him, he's also a capable back. Enough is enough. Uh, fullback, hey, Jackie, used to be a cowboy. Um, the wide receivers quickly are very underrated because they're very athletic. Look at the guys. Uh, Kendall Wright is very good. Kendall Wright is very, very good. Uh, is is budding to be one of the better receivers in, in the league. Uh, Nate Washington is solid. Justin Hunter, you can see that six foot four, 200, 203 pounds, so he's a physical beast. Uh, Hagen, and then now here you got TJ Graham. But look at their speed, 96 speed. And I know you got to add McCluster in that too. Uh, McCluster, 92 speed. Um, TJ Graham, uh, 96 speed. Uh, Hunter, 93 speed. Nate, 93 speed. Kendall Wright, 93 speed. And you look at the agility um, acceleration combo, 96-95 for Wright, 92-91 for Washington, 94-91 for Hunter, 91-94 for TJ Graham, and 95-93 for Dexter McCluster. Those guys be moving, okay? So the, it, with the ball in their hands, they can make some things happen. All right, tight end, Delaney Walker. He's a decent tight end. He's been in the league for a while. Pretty fast. You see 84, 80, 85 here. And uh, Taylor Thompson, the, the third string, is 8, 85 speed too. And their strength is pretty good too, 74, 81, 76. The interesting thing about um, the Titans tight end, and I'm going to go back to it in a minute also when I talk about the offensive line, they all can block. Run block 84, run block 84, run block 85. So it, those tight ends are on that team for a purpose, and they work on their blocking. Now, left tackle. You got Michael Roos. This is Taylor Lewan, the guy I was talking about in my video. Taylor Lewan is a rookie. Hadn't cracked that lineup. Why? Roos is still on top of his, his game. 89, still playing really good. 94 strength. Andy Levitra is one of the top uh, guards in the game right now, top of his game. Center. This is the guy. This is the guy. Um, if we didn't get Travis Frederick, and we would have went defense that year, and I said we should have went defense in the second round, get Tra Travis Frederick. If the Cowboys are telling the truth, which which they rarely do, and the Ravens did scoop up Travis Frederick in the second round, 
then we would have had Swinky right there to pick up because they didn't pick him up, I think, think, to the fourth round or something like that. So um, third or fourth. But we would have had Swinky, my bottom, bottom line, and he's a very, very, very capable center. You see his strength in 91. At right guard, Chance Warmack. You remember him, possibly the best guard in the draft last year. Um, then you have Mr. Blindside, Michael Orr, who does not play on the blind side anymore. Hmm. I don't remember him ever playing the blind side either. I know he started out with the right. All right, whatever. Michael Orr, but he's still capable. 97 strength. I mean, he's a perfect right tackle, actually, because he's a road grader. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, remember when we went back to the 3-4 and we got Kenyon Coleman and people of that sort, uh, Bill Parcells did, and, you know, we just needed some beef over there on the, on the defensive ends. That's what Pitititua is. Pitititua you are, is. And Al Woods also. They're big, strong guys over there at the end. Uh, on the other side, this guy is a bona fide monster, I believe. You know, and I can't wait to see his production in a 3 4 because mostly the, the, the defensive ends in a 3 4, they usually don't get many, many stats or anything. But I want to see what Jarrell Casey does because he is the best guy on that defensive line by far. I want to see if the numbers will prove that him, with him being a defensive end in a 3 4. Then you have Sammy Hill and you have um, Chin, Chinobo. But both of them are, are kind of strong, but nothing nothing that you can't, you shouldn't be able to move out, move out the way. Um, and at linebacker, yeah, Derek Morgan and Sean Phillips. Derek Morgan is who they want to, you know, be their guy right now. Sean Phillips, but if he can't, Sean Phillips definitely can uh, fill in. Uh, they lost him middle linebacker. Middle linebacker, Zach Brown, tremendous talent. I, I drafted him in my Madden League. Oh, um, my Madden League. Uh, USFL Cowboys is my YouTube channel. I stream all my games there. You can see the highlights of their league. All the kind of stuff you can see that USFL Cowboys, that Shango stuff. I just started the, the, the website, but I have him on my squad. Um, 89 speed, 88 agility, 91 acceleration. He's a monster. But uh, Tennessee lost him for the year. However, look at their backups: 85 speed, 90 speed, 85 speed, and also very athletic. Look at Gooden: 91 acceleration, 87 uh, agility. So they are stacked at linebacker. They're not. They're going to miss him. But then also Kim, uh, Cameron Wembley on the other side, very good rusher. Akeem Ayers, I hear they're going to use him a lot in the middle probably at the MLB two position. So we probably we might see Ayers. We might see Gooden. Uh, we might even see Williamson. So we don't know what we're going to get right there at that at that uh, at Xavier Gooden's. Uh, uh, not Gooden's, uh, Zach Brown's position. This is the most interesting thing, and I'll let you go, is the um, Jason McCourty thing. Jason McCourty is not one of those Patrick Peterson and the only lockdown corner, but he's one of the best corners in Madden, one of the best corners. I really did want him in draft, and this was one, one of the main aspects of the reason why I wanted him right here. Come on, I passed it. Trying to trying to make dramatic effect past it. Where is it at? There it is. 76 tackle. For a cornerback, it's nice. And he's already got good size, six foot one ninety three. He's a physical corner. That means he's gonna be physical with Dez. He's gonna put his hands on Dez. He's gonna tackle Dez when they throw that little thing out there for, for Dez. They got another one down here, Huff. Another one. I want to. Well, interested in seeing him too. And here's the other guy, Blendy Ray Wilson. Also six foot one. 198. He can't tackle as well yet, but I'm sure he's working on it. But he has some pop. He's 57, not far away from the um the 60 pal. But um, also here, the, the second aspect to this thing is the zone coverage. You can see there's zone, zone guys, 85, 82, 94. There's zone guys. So he's going to do a lot of zone things. He's going to take be overly physical. He's going to do a lot of things where he doesn't have to play Dez one-on-one. He can create, create a lot of confusion and create a lot of um, uh, missed opportunities for Romo and Dez uh, to connect. So I think he's going to be... Far more distru disruptive than we think he will be in the in the past in our passing game, you know. Because when when Romo, that's the one thing Romo. If Romo doesn't see that Dez has somebody one on one and he can beat him, a lot of times Romo doesn't throw the Dez. So if Romo doesn't throw the Dez, then it it greatly lessens our chances of victory. Um, and then safeties, you know, Michael Griffin, you know him. He's been there for years. Years and you got Bernard Paula. So those are two strong safety. Bernard Paula slow as molasses. I can't deal with that in Madden. I don't know how that's gonna work out in like real life and stuff. But 80, no way. But those two safeties are pretty good and they'll be able to play strong. But uh, yeah, I think I think we got a lot of a lot of information here. Uh, one more thing. 
kick return. Look at there, 99.99. McCluster and Leon Washington are bona fide killers in the kicking game. So if we don't, aren't on our P's and Q's in the kicking game, then they can sneak some points there. They can get some good field position there, and they can really hurt us, and they can really destroy us through the kicking game. So there's that. So I'm telling you, this this Titans team, when we got the schedule, we probably thought of them as an easy victory. Right now, they're trying to convince their people that we're not an easy victory for them. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Holla to you later. Peace.